Let the speculation begin. Letter of Intent Day is one week away for Husker fans. And 20 years ago, someone who gave Husker fans a, a thrill on National Letter of Intent Day was Tommy Frazier. Tommy joins us for the recruiting preview show this week. Was it that long, 20 years ago? Well, I just did the math yeah, real quick. 92, Winner of 90, your senior yes. year. Yeah, that was a long time ago. I don't feel old, though. But <laughs> I don't feel old, but it, is, it has been 20 years. Yeah. And take us back to that, your senior year. A couple things stand out about your recruitment to Nebraska. It was, it got busy, and, and especially the last week. Of the, of, the, of the recruiting season because I think what's what's happening now, you're seeing a lot of guys, of the ones who haven't committed, are taking their last visits. And so everyone is making that last push because after this week, you have to, after you make your visit on campus and when you get back on that Sunday, no coach can talk to you. You know, so everyone's making a push right now to make sure that they, they, they put, get their sales pitch in. And what they, they usually always say that the last team that gets you on campus usually – is the last team that wins, you know. Mm-hmm. So it it's it's gonna be a, it's it, it's exciting for some some players, but it's also a pain in you know what for some yeah. players because a lot of players are ready for this process to end because there really is no time to where you can relax from mm-hmm. the t- from the time you wake up until the time you go to sleep. There might be a college coach there to talk to you. Mm-hmm. But what about your recruitment? What do you remember? Did you take all five visits? Because us regular. Civilians, we think we look at you guys getting uh-huh. trips all across the country, and we're amazed when a recruit only takes two of his five. It's like, why don't you take all five? Well, and, and that's the thing about it. Yes, I, I did take all five of my <laughs> trips, and it wasn't because I wanted to, because because quite frankly, I truly was ready to commit to Colorado when I went out there. But they they decided they want to go a different direction. So then I did take the rest of my trips, and it was the best thing for me because I got to see places. That, that I probably never will see and haven't been to those places again. But you need to take them just to make sure that you're that what in whatever school you're going to choose, you're making the right decision. I mean, you don't want to just get stuck on your first school you go to, you commit to that school. Because you never know another school down the road mm-hmm. might have something to offer better. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I recommend that all players stop committing early. Mm-hmm. I understand that's where you want to go. Mm-hmm. If that's where you want to go, fine. Keep it in the back of your mind, but go take those trips, especially when there's someone who's willing to pay for you to go visit their campus because you never know what could happen. You might see something on that campus that might, wait a minute. As this, in what would they see? If they can see anything. Co-eds? It, it, it can be co-eds. It can be, it, it can be co-eds. It can be teammates. It can be opportunity to plan early. It can it can be a number of things. Mm-hmm. You know, so but just go and take them yeah. because it's the wrong thing. It's a free trip for you. Yeah, that's a great point because once you make the decision, the coaches, and not that they are evil, but they're in the driver's seat. You get one time to make the choice. Yeah, so and then they're in, they're in charge. And coaches go and coaches are going to pressure you to commit early because they think. But to me, I look at I look at recruiting as like it's like dating a female. <laughs> and and, 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 see, well, I, and, I can, and, and the reason perfect. why I said it because when you get engaged to a female. You just engage. Mm-hmm. There's, there's nothing to say that you got to stick with her. There's, there's nothing to say, oh, we're together forever. So that's the verbal. So that's the verbal. So, but once you sign, <laughs> that's the idea. you're married. <laughs> you're married to that school. So it's going, So you got to go through a lot of loopholes to get out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, so don't don't get engaged. Because I see a lot of players who say, that I'm going here. And then take a trip and I'm going here. Mm-hmm. And take a trip and I'm going there. They, they engage three or four times through the whole, the whole process. Mm-hmm. Don't get engaged until the end of it, until you know for sure that's where you want to go. And that's where you want to go, then don't take the other trips. So the Colorado Buffaloes broke your heart. No, they didn't break my heart. You, you know? were ready to get engaged. No, I was ready, but I never said I was coming. Yeah, it wasn't verbal. Because, so. because they said, hey, they didn't want me, Yeah, which is okay. And tell the tell our fine viewers, who did they select over you? Um, uh, Cord Detmer. Yeah. It's like the core Detman. If they want to go to the spread offense, uh, the more throw offense, and they got away from their option. And as we know at the time, they had Cordell Stewart. Darian Hagen. They had, they had right. Darian Hagen, Eric Bermini. They won a national championship running option. Mm-hmm. Sal Unassi's. And, and then around the time I came out, they saw that Cordell Stewart was going to meet up, but they wanted to transition mm-hmm. to more of a, a throwing offense, and they felt that they didn't fit, they, they fit this, that scheme. So mm-hmm. they, they took core Detman with me, and 
The rest but, is the Husker rest, history. The rest is not the rest is not Husker. The rest is it's college football history. That's true. That's true. A, a bad break for the Buffs. Detmer turned out to be a good quarterback, but I think we know what uh, Nebraska fans ended up with Tommy. And Nebraska, right now, as we've said, letter of intent day is Wednesday, February 1st. Mm-hmm. Nebraska has one guy enrolled, uh, a midterm mm-hmm. a midterm enrollee from junior college, someone who will not backdoor us or change of heart, uh, Mohamed Cisse, a right. foot two, 200 uh, foot two hundred pound cornerback right from Ari- an Arizona junior college, and you watch some film on him. What you think of Mo? I like him. I think I think he's one of those guys that can come in and and, and compete right away. I'm not saying he's a guy will come in and start right away, but he's 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 your, your your prototypical corner that you're looking for now. To a guy who's tall enough, who's big enough, who's quick enough, who's fast enough to play the position. To where he reminds me of a lot of a of, of Mora. To where the, with the size and the, and the ability. Now, the, will he turn out to be that, that type of player? On time will tell. Yeah. But just when you just look at him, all, you just look at him as, as from eye eye candy. I call him eye candy. <laughs> you know, he, he's true. very impressive. But I, you, you gotta wait till they get on campus to see what they do when they're out on the field. Yeah. And and I and I I've been preaching here for the last fifteen years. Even when I, even when I was coached at Baylor, what they do in high school and in junior college. It's totally different than what they're gonna do at Division One level another because speed. It, because it's another speed and it's and the and the schemes are a lot more complicated than what you what you're gonna face. So I want to see what he does when he steps on campus and puts those pads on and go out there against Division One players. Mm-hmm. And cornerbacks can come in all sizes, but yeah, exactly right. like you said, if you're gonna draw up in the laboratory, six two lean, that's what you want. But we saw Alfonso, barely five foot ten. Thick muscled, and he's a beast. Yeah, but and, and, but that's a real case now. Mm-hmm. But but if you look at if you look at the the drafts and you look at all of, where everyone wants to be, they project they, people. They project people. They looking for the six one, six two, six three mm-hmm. corners who can run. Why? Because there are a lot of tall guys receivers in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Yes, you're gonna have a a, a dinner who who yeah. breaks the mold and say, you know, yeah. this is a special player to where he can. We're not worried about his side because he's he's tenacious. He's a baller. He can cover, mm-hmm. but Come, well, once again, he's the prototypical Zach 6'2", Bowman. Zach Bowman guy, and that can run. Mm-hmm. And that's what you, that's, that's what NFL players are looking at, and that's what most college coaches are looking for now in the corner. Mm-hmm. And actually, Mo comes from the same junior college as former Husker Zach Bowman, who's played in the Mexico military. Uh, yeah, the same Mexico? one, a few yeah, years. My, with the, my um, younger color plate was Zach Bowman in the Mexico military. Okay. Yes, yes. So I know a lot about the Mexico, the and I, Mexico military. And Nebraska had another corner, Andre Jones, or another one come out of there. But one thing that's interesting with Mo's background is he wasn't just coming out of high school two years out of junior college. He actually went to Memphis, redshirted in 2009. Then transferred. No, he played 2010. So he has a year of experience. And he actually made um, freshman all-conference USA, had two interceptions, and he started 10 games. Mm -hmm. So he's coming, you know, I don't know that he said this in – you know, Memphis probably didn't like it, but he wanted to go play at a bigger school because he had some success. And he figures, I'm going to go to a JC for a year. And last year in junior college, he had six picks in eight games. And not only Nebraska, but Oklahoma and Arkansas also offered him. And, and, and quite frankly, the Oklahoma and Arkansas defense was a lot better than Nebraska's. So mm-hmm. if those schools are on, so, so obviously there's a steal there for us. And I think the, pro, I think the reason why we got him, there's a need because there's a need, <laughs> and, and 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 they saw and they probably told him that you come you come in here and play right away. Here's what we have. Mm-hmm. Here's what we, here's what we playing with now. You come and play right away. Sure. And so so that's probably why we got him. Trivia time, Tommy. How many cornerbacks started opposite Dennard this year? Uh, let's see. I will say four. Actually, it was five. Well, and that probably plays into the need. Yes. So that was one thing that. I think that was too much, and we can complain well, 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 about well, well, staff. Who were the five? Who were the five? Um, Cooper. Cooper. Cooper was the problem you weren't thinking of. I won't think that's who it was. I won't think of Cooper. And I hear Cooper might be at well at outside linebacker and at safety. So we'll see what happens with him. Let's but there was Cooper Mitchell, Mitchell Evans, Green, Green, yes, and, and Stanley Jean Baptiste. So um, the the need was there, and they're probably able to sell him on that. But, you know, I'll back up from last week. I think we got some good corners. They had a first-year coach and a lot of young players. So, Mo looks good, has good stats. 
But right. you can't tell me a year at Memphis automatically is going to make you better than Andrew Green, no, I, Siante Evans. I don't think it he's is. He's going to have to battle. He's going to have to battle because now he's going to come in here and learn the system that they're teaching here. So that what what you did at one Division One doesn't matter because the systems might be different. Oh yeah, and the culture up. might be different. And, well, I, it's it's a step up, but it's still Division Level One football. Of competition. It, it's still Division One football from Memphis to here. It's still Division One football. But I just think the the, the, uh, the the schemes that they're teaching at Nebraska is going to be totally different from what he learned at Memphis, and the competition is going to be a little bit different mm-hmm. than what he, you know. So nothing going to be handed to him on the platter. He has to go out and earn it. And Tommy, talk a little bit about. Since Mo is going to be here for the spring, how is that an advantage over coming in now or next August? Oh, it's it's a huge advantage because now you get to see now you get to go through a whole fifteen practices and learn the system. Nothing's nothing's going to be solidified starting competition, starting positions, come out of spring. Yes, we know that we have a handful of guys who are going to have starting position, but when you talk about that secondary. It's up, that it, it's up for grabs. The only one I think that might have a, a the best chance of saying I'm gonna start it is Stratford. Outside of that, it's open to me. Mm-hmm. You know, so by him being here in the spring, going to spring ball, competing. Yeah, I think that's why he could start. That he, he could be a guy who comes in and say and, and, and press and say and come out of spring and start. Well, I don't know. Bo doesn't know. Papuska doesn't know. Coach Raymond doesn't know. They're not going to know until the end of spring ball and watch how he progressed because he could come in here and, and, and have an injury that, that, that mm-hmm. slows him down. We don't know that. But he has a good chance. You're watching Tommy Frazier's X's and O's, and this week we're talking recruiting. So actually we could call it Tommy Frazier's Jimmy's and Joe's because we're not breaking stuff down. Yeah, we are breaking. We're breaking players. Yeah, players down. So, Jimmy's and Joe's. So the X's are the defense and the O's are the offense. Uh, Tommy <laughs> Frazier's Jimmy's and Joe's. <laughs> well, you just had to get your name in it, didn't you? Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, in case you didn't know, I'm Jimmy Shield, co-hosting Tommy <laughs> Frazier's Jimmy's and Joe's. And Tommy, one player who unfortunately for him and the, the team won't be able to be here for spring ball is a, another junior college player at another position of need, uh, linebacker Zaire Anderson. I wish he was here. I, I, think, he, I think he's probably one of the guys who would come in here and make an impact right away. And I think it's going to hurt him in his regression because he can't be doing the spring ball. If you would have told me what's the what's the one position that you that you needed here and can have an impact but need to be here for spring, it would have been him. Mm-hmm. I, I felt that I felt that the, the cornerback he can come in and fall and still learn stuff and learn it quick because you put him in situations to where mm-hmm. cover and play this you play different. But linebacker is there's so much that he has mm-hmm. to learn and 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 coming in here and learning bowl scheme and learning. How to take on the bigger lineman that he's gonna be facing in the Big Ten? It might be he might start off slow, mm-hmm. and hopefully by the middle of the year he picks it up. If he comes in right away and starts off strong and he makes an impact right away, that's a bonus. Mm-hmm. But it's gonna to be tougher for him to come in right away and make an impact unless they say, you know what, we don't have anybody better than him. We're gonna put him out there, and that's guess right. what? Well, we're gonna live with it because we know that he can make plays. But he has to go out there and show that in the fall camp before they decide that. Yeah, and Mo. Cisse has an interesting backstory with some previous Division I experience, which is going to help him. And unfortunately, on the other hand, Anderson has some interesting backstory, but his isn't as helpful as he primarily played running back in high school in the Philadelphia area. Right. And then the last two years, he's been primarily a linebacker. So he's only really been playing defense for two years. And um, yeah. his size, six foot, 220. Um, and he also played some middle backer, but I think the slot where they're going to be looking at him is going to be weak side. Right, because they got to have Compton coming back to fill Comp- put Compton where David mm-hmm. was, and then they still. I think they still need to go out find another linebacker. Yeah, well, they only have so much, but it's too bad that he re- really is not here, here in spring. Yes, spring. Yes, because I think you know maybe Will Compton's not all world. He's not all world, but I think if I think Zaire he, could compete in the spring. I think I think he's not all world. But Compton showed down the end of the season that he oh, he's solid. Dude. That he's solid. And right now, I think Nebraska. If you look he's at set. if you go back to to the early the early nineties, early eighties, or late eighties, early nineties, Nebraska never really had a stud Mike back. They had solid back Mike backers, and they fit everybody around him. Like Mike Anderson was a solid Mike backer. Phil Ellis was forty eight. Solid, uh, solid, solid Mike backer. So I think if you got a solid guy in the middle who can who can Bear support Rue. and run, Bear Rue was a solid. Backer. I don't think he was all world. He was a solid back to where he did. He was a blue collar. He made plays. He, 
He didn't necessarily go sideline to sideline. Side line. He made a play when he had to make plays. He made it in front of him. But well, 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 Alonzo Whaley, I think I hope I said his name right, right? Yeah. Coming on strong. Strong side. Eight, coming on strong. Put him out there. I think now you have three good linebackers there that you can say, okay, I see now they're starting to get a linebacker system there. The question is, what do they have behind them? So that's so that so that's my own. That's why I said maybe they last sign a couple more linebackers. They have four high school ones. We'll talk about next week, but uh, with they Anderson, have they have four, but they're not committed yet. Well, they're they're verbal. They're verbal, but they're, they're not committed. Engaged. They're, they're, engaged. they're engaged. They're not committed. <laughs> but still, a true freshman coming in here and playing that would be it's gonna be tough. But uh, but my problem will, will they but, be able to? Make I, but, it small see, but, but see, I don't say true freshman because I look at all the other teams. In 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 the, in, in, the, in the country that are playing true freshman linebackers and they're making impact. So if they're gonna play, they have to go out and recruit the ones that can come in and play. You get that eight pound defensive playbook, unfortunately. Yeah. So so you get so you gotta shrink it mm-hmm. and get your athletes on the field and let them play. A name you will hear when we do our spring preview is David Santos, a true freshman this year who redshirted out of Texas, mm-hmm. who was close. So they do have some they do have some some depth there, but I just hope they can. You please know, don't say depth because it's, uh, please don't say that, that potential, not it's depth. Because same they have a body, they have a body. Because we don't know the same thing they said about the defensive line that we have most depth that we that we ever had here. And what happened? Mm-hmm. They had so many injuries, they, they yeah. broke it and they didn't play. They didn't play the way. So we they have body there or potential. Mm-hmm. We don't know if they, if, if that potential is going to be into a player until they mm-hmm. actually got in game situation, taking on West Coast three hundred and twenty five average. Pound offensive line average, mm-hmm. or taking on Michigan's big guys, or taking on Michigan State big guys. We don't know that yet. Mm-hmm. So they have a body. There's potential there. But we don't know if it's a quality backup. Yeah, and deciding who has potential, who doesn't, was one of your jobs as a coach. Mm-hmm. And you talked about it from a player's angle. What about any kind of interesting or funny things from coaching, recruiting Division One at Baylor? Yeah, there's a lot of interesting things that you, that you know, Kevin still. And he and, and he and he just got let go at Clemson, which and I think it was it was wrong to see. And they played great all year, and then of course not too many bad people, PR from bad, the bowl yeah, game. Bad PR from the bowl game, but but we look at it this way: the offense put them in bad situations too. He had a he had a deal on the sand, and I all and I'm I live by this, and I tell all of the coaches I run to: whoever you you recruit at what position. And you're gonna have a whole list of players in each position. He always say he don't say the starter. He say, "Is this guy we're recruiting have the potential of being better than the backup?" And if that question is yes, recruit him. Mm-hmm. Go out there. If that question is no, then take a step back and look at other things that he might bring. Because if you're going out and just recruiting players just to, to fill up your roster and to fill up your 85 scholarship, then you're going for the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. You always want to try to recruit players that either could come in and be a backup or beat the starter out. Mm-hmm. That's how you keep talent coming. That's how you that's how you spark competition. Mm-hmm. If you're recruiting guys saying, well, three years from now, and some position, some position you can do this, mm-hmm. three years from now, then he'll be a player. We gotta develop him. Mm-hmm. Which is okay. You want to you want to develop players. But in today's football, Players don't stick around. Mm-hmm. If they're as good as you say they are, uh-huh. and they go out and show it, they're going to leave. Bobby Bowden. They're going to leave. So if you have a true freshman, you play him as a true freshman because if he's as good as you say you are, as, as he is, mm-hmm. you're only going to have him three years. You're not going to redshirt. But if he's not as good as he as you say what, you're going to go find someone that's better because he's not going to pan out. And that also, in the program, it builds competition. And that breeds it where people don't feel secure. And that's the one thing that Coach Osborne always did was bring in competition. Bring in players who, when you look over your shoulder, if you're not playing your best, you could be sitting on the sideline next week because this guy's going to be going there. And that's why we work well because whether I was a starter or a Brook play, Nebraska still won Mm -hmm. because the competition was there. And we prepared it. Everybody was prepared. You see teams who have a starting quarterback, and then all of a sudden, when the starting quarterback goes down, then everything else just falls down. It's false. It's false. Well, you want to keep keep the competition to where it doesn't matter who's losing the game, the level's not going to drop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember after you won a national championship for Nebraska, you had to hold Brooke off in the I spring had, in the of spring ball, I had to go back and battle <laughs> for the job and, 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 and win it again. Yeah, but that pushed you guys <coughs> both to be at your best. Right. And what Tommy's talking about, bringing in – Good players is exactly what Coach Polini's trying, and we're going to find out next Wednesday 
with about a class of 19 to 20, probably 18 high school guys, right. if he was able to do that. Today, we just kind of broke down the junior college guys who we really see as making a contribution, and you never know. Maybe some of those high school guys can surprise. But we'll tell you who they are next week. Next week, baby. Next on, Wednesday. On we'll Tommy know. Frazier's Jimmy's and Joe's. We'll know, baby. <laughs>